In video number 26, we discussed the Veen Bridge Oscillator. And uh, you'll recall that in that video, we talked about how an oscillator is really just an amplifier that has a little bit of the output picked off and fed back into the input. Well, in the case of a Veen Bridge Oscillator, that process is mediated through resistors and capacitors and we described one um, particular implementation of the Veen Bridge circuit that involved an operational amplifier. Well, I encourage you to go back and review that video. In this video, we're going to respond to a viewer question where they ask if we could show the algebra between a couple of steps. So you recall that we wrote down the equations for this circuit uh, by modeling the circuit in this way. So we took out the amplifying branch and we just looked at the uh, input and output branch. <clears throat> so we have this series uh, RC combination and we have a parallel RC combination. And the equations for those circuits, uh, those branches of the circuits, are just expressed in terms of these two impedances. And when you look at the circuit this way, this becomes really nothing more than a voltage divider uh, that we want to understand the uh, voltage output here in terms of the voltage input, which is oscillatory, and these two complex impedances. Well, when you begin fighting your way through this, we can write down the complex impedance, the Z1, in terms of the pure ohm resistance, R, plus a reactive component due to the capacitor. This is just the series RC branch. And the reactive component is just 1 over J omega C. The parallel branch of the circuit, this parallel RC combination, is a little bit more complicated. Z2 is going to be the product over the sum uh, of, these, uh, of the resistive and the reactive components. So we're going to have 1 times 1 over J omega C divided by R plus 1 over J omega C. Okay? That simplifies to this expression. And we then get to the, the point here that V0 is Z2 over Z1 plus Z2 times V in. I should probably call this V out instead of V naught. All right. So the question arose when a viewer asked, how did I get from this complex expression, or maybe I should say complicated expression, quote, after some algebra, to this more simplified expression? Well, let's, uh, let's look at that. So we're going to just rewrite this in uh, maybe a little neater form and think about the question and how to answer the question. So the question is, is, well, what does the algebra look like in getting to the result that I quoted? <clears throat> and we can take a strategy that uh, kind of has three steps to getting there. So the first, uh, first step could be to get a common denominator in the denominator of this complex expression, complicated expression. Uh, and then step two would be to carry out the division by inverting now this, uh, this more simplified denominator and then multiplying it by the numerator. And then step three would be simplify the resulting expression and derive the result. So let's, uh, let's do that. So step one, is find a common denominator for this expression up here. Okay, so again, I'm just simply looking at the denominator of this. So I'm going to rewrite the denominator here. So the denominator is r over 1 plus j omega rc plus r plus 1 over j omega c. Well, the first step in finding a common denominator of this whole expression would be to find a common denominator for uh, these two components of that expression. And that's pretty easy. Remember, I can multiply anything by 1. Anything times 1 is just that anything. 
So I'm going to multiply this r by 1, but I'm going to write 1 as j omega c over j omega c. Okay. When I do that, I can then combine these two terms into 1 plus j omega rc over j omega rc. All right. And then when I add that to r over 1 plus j omega rc, it then becomes pretty obvious what the common denominator is. It's just going to be j omega r, I'm sorry, j omega c times 1 plus j omega rc. So the common denominator is going to be that. All right. So just continuing on a little bit. How do we actually implement that? Well, again, I'm going to multiply that first term by effectively 1, but I'm going to write 1 as j omega c over j omega c. And I'm going to mu multiply this term by 1 plus j omega rc over 1 plus j omega rc. All right? So when I do that for this term, I'm going to get j omega rc right here. And then I have to multiply this binomial term by this binomial term. Okay? So I'm going to get 1 times 1 is 1. Then I'm going to get a factor of j omega rc, and I'm going to pick up another factor of j omega rc. So I've got 2j omega rc. And then I've got j omega rc times j omega rc, which is j omega rc quantity squared. But I know that j squared is just minus 1, so I can take that out here. I've got minus quantity omega rc squared. Okay, And the denominator is now just j omega c times 1 plus j omega rc down here. All right. This doesn't look simpler, but I promise you it's, it's going to get there. So now let's uh, simplify the numerator. I've got j omega rc plus 2j omega rc, so I've got a 3j omega rc here. I've got a 1, so I can include that there. And then I've just got a minus omega rc quantity squared, which I write there. And then the bottom, the, the denominator, is just j omega c times 1 plus j omega rc. All right. So I found my common denominator of the denominator. So step two is invert and multiply in order to carry out the division. So the numerator that I'm uh, working working towards is just j, I'm sorry, it's just r, it's just r over 1 plus j omega rc, and then the denominator, now I invert this and multiply, so it's times j omega c times 1 plus j omega rc, all over 1 plus 3j omega rc minus quantity omega rc squared. And notice that this factor and this factor divide out leaving me now with a j omega rc upstairs divided by 1 plus 3 j omega rc minus quantity omega rc squared. Now I'm going to again multiply by 1, but I'm going to write 1 as 1 over j omega rc divided by 1 over j omega rc. When I do that, that's going to get rid of this factor up here, so I'll just be left with 1 over 3, the j omega rc factor goes out, so I have 3, plus this factor here, 1 over j omega rc, and then I'm left with omega rc quantity squared divided by j times omega rc. Right? But again, I think you can see that one factor of omega rc is going to go. So this 2 up there becomes a 1. And I'm now left with this expression is 1 over 3 plus 1 over j omega rc minus omega rc over j. <clears throat> and this should be looking a lot closer to the expression we're trying to derive. So just a couple more steps. I can factor a 1 over j outside of all this. So I've got 1 over 3 plus 1 over j times 1 over omega rc minus omega rc. Now, I could actually stop here and get to the uh, expression for the resonant frequency 
if I demand that this complex part, sorry, this imaginary part of the, of the denominator be zero, then I get this equal to that ex expression. And, uh, and I find out that omega is one over RC. But uh, just following it through to the, uh, to the gory end, I can make it look exactly like the expression that I wrote by noting that one over J is just minus J. And if you don't remember that, you can always work it out. One over J is equal to one over J times J over J. One times J is just J and J times J or J squared is minus one which is minus j. Okay. So I'm left with, now this is step three, I'm simplifying one over three minus j times one over rc minus omega rc. And then bringing that minus sign through, I get one over three plus j times omega rc minus one over omega rc. So, we've illustrated what we were trying to derive, namely that the expression for V0 uh, equal to Z2 over Z1 plus Z2 times Vn becomes, after some algebra, V0 equals 1 over 3 plus J times quantity omega RC minus 1 over, 1 over omega RC times Vn. And you go back to the notes from the video, uh, number 26, that is exactly what was claimed. That we started with this rather complicated expression, and after we did some algebra, we got to here. All right. Well, I uh, hope that this is helpful. I don't usually like showing all the gory steps uh, for the math in these uh, expressions. For a couple of reasons, uh, one is it's it's math, and it's it's not really the physics of of the electronic uh, circuit expressions that we're we're trying to understand. Uh, and two, it's really only by struggling with putting in the missing steps between equations, whether it's in a set of notes or book or paper, that you really build up the skills and the confidence to struggle through the math. On the other hand, I, I figured that this was an opportunity to show exactly how to slog through the tedious algebra, which really isn't that tedious compared to, uh, compared to some things that you run into in electronics. But, um, but I figured it was a way to show how to, to, to get through um, a lot of algebra by breaking it down into bite-sized steps. In this case, we had kind of three steps in our overall strategy of deriving the equation. Well, if there are similar questions on other videos, please ask. I might, uh, might make a supplementary video like this one where I show the steps, or uh, in future videos I'll probably describe maybe some of the strategies for getting from one expression to the next. As I said, I hope you found this useful. If so, please give it a thumbs up below. Thanks for watching.